Our first guest tonight uh, does it all and does it very well. He was at one time the fattest baby born in Clark County, Arkansas. Now he returns as the hard-drinking lawyer, Billy McBride, on Goliath. The final season premieres Friday on Amazon Prime Video. Please welcome Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> Of that fattest baby in Arkansas. Oh thing. yeah, I know. Yeah, that was uh, that was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not often you meet people who were the fattest uh, no. baby in a county. No, you I know, weighed, I weighed thirty pounds at seven and a half months old. Thirty. That's pounds? like a sixth grader. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's a good size. It's a real good size. It How is. you doing? I heard you're moving right now. Well, yeah, we moved in May. Oh, you moved? Okay. Yeah, uh, oh. To Pacoima. <laughs> oh, to. <laughs> and, uh, you're living yeah. in Pacoima now, huh? Yeah. yeah. Is that you know, the new hot spot? That's the new one, yes. They're going <laughs> to do like Silver Lake. They're going to turn it into one of those I things. bet you they probably will. You, maybe yeah. you've started something here Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah we, uh, we bought this house because it has a separate building that's a recording studio. And ah. so me and the box masters will be recording in the, this place. And uh, Oh, nice. Yeah. So, Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. like, uh, that's a feature when you saw it, you're like, oh yeah, I want to have well, that. Well, yeah, I mean, Connie, my wife, she really wanted us to uh, have that because uh, it keeps me at home. Uh -huh. And uh, also, I don't have to drive all the way to the Sunset Marquee when she kicks me out. <laughs> I can just, you know, go down the hill to the recording studio. Is that what happens when you guys have a dispute? You go to the Sunset Marquee? I saw yes. you at the Sunset Marquee once. Many times, <laughs> once. Well, I've not been there He's a lot being of times. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spot. That's like your couch. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're not kidding, right? I mean, this I'm, for I'm real. I'm not kidding. I, I used to make a joke that every time. Well, it's not really a joke. Every time I would get a divorce, I would live at the Sunset Marquee, which was pretty often. <laughs> so. Yeah. How many times did you live there? Three or four. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. So, like, does the guy now, like, at the front desk when he sees you coming, like, he knows, like, something's like, what was it about this time? That kind of kinda thing? Kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dwight Yoakam actually once wanted to make a video where you would just start on a car door opening and you see these boots and jeans get out and you follow the boots all the way to this front desk and you would hear a voice say, welcome back, Mr. Thornton, you know, and then... <laughs> Do a video from that, yeah. <laughs> what, um, when you moved to L.A., what was going on? Were you a carouser? Were you, like, were you out having a really good time? You know, I was poverty-stricken, but okay. somehow managed to have a good time in the 80s. Uh, yeah, I got here in uh, 80, 81, I guess it was, and we had, uh, my buddies and I had a uh, Bermuda Triangle of sin, which was, we would go to a place called the Club Lingerie on Sunset, which is no longer there. We would go to that place and see whatever band was there, which was usually Dread Zeppelin, and uh, saw Dr. John there. Wow. And then we would go next door to the Hollywood Athletic Club, shoot pool, and we would end up at the Cat and Fiddle across the street. And uh, it was, I mean, they were all just, just like that. And, and that was your regular rotation? That was our regular ro rotation. People knew you th there? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, they did. Do you keep in touch with those guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. Do you guys ever do the rotation again? I know Club Lingerie is not there, but maybe there's like a, I don't not know, Blockbuster really. or I mean, we're something. Too, we're too... No Blockbuster <laughs> either anymore yet. <laughs> the worst possible reference I, I, I could come up with. <laughs> but I remember that. <laughs> so you guys were yeah. hanging out, meeting people. Yeah. You were getting married, getting divorced, doing the whole thing yeah. over and over again. Yeah, and like, then who made it first? I assume your buddies, were they in show business as well? Were they actors? We, we were, most of the guys I hung out with were in acting class or in the theater group I belonged to, which was uh -huh. called the West Coast Ensemble. And uh, we all hung out together. And yeah, I know, I'm still keep in touch with most of those guys. Yeah, I was the first one that broke out, I guess you would say. Yeah. What was the first thing, like show or movie, that you were in? Uh, gosh, I don't know. I. I I did, I was very excited because I, I had one scene where I played a pawn shop owner on Matlock. Wow. And uh, I was so excited because 
When I was a kid, I used to listen to Andy Griffith's comedy records where he would do spoofs of like Cinderella and Romeo and Juliet and all that stuff. And that was the first time I thought, hey, that'd be fun to do that, you know? And, oh, so uh, Andy Griffith, that was a big influence then, I guess. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, oh. he, yeah, he was, he was. And I watched the Andy Griffith show all the time. And so here I'm going to be on Matlock. And I went to the set before my scene, and he was there. And Bob Sweeney was directing the episode, who used to direct the Andy Griffith show. So I thought I was in tall cotton, as they say, yeah. sort of. And um, so I went up to him, and I said to him, Mr. Griffith, uh, I'm playing the pawn shop owner today, and I just want to tell you, you're the reason I started acting. And he kind of looked at me funny and just walked away. I guess he was having a bad day. <laughs> and, uh, and then you cut to years later, and he called me when I was nominated the first time for an Academy Award, and he was very nice to me. Wow. And uh, so then, in 98, I think it was, I directed this movie that nobody ever saw, and he, and he played my father in it. I cast him as my father. And uh, on the set, and by that time, we were pals, and uh, I said, uh, you know, I did an episode of Matlock one time. And he said, oh, did you? And I said, yeah. He said, which episode was it? And he, I told him the episode. And he said, oh, I hated that episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Well, never meet your idols, I guess, is the lesson. Yeah. But he was very sweet. He was very, very good to me. Yeah. yeah. Did you spend a lot of time with him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I knew him very well and Don Knotts. I knew them both very well. I mean, that's the thing. Don Knotts, too. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, wow. That was great. Uh, I mean, that's the thing about it. When you've been in this business for a long time, you eventually meet kind of everybody, and you meet people that you never dreamed you would, you know? Yeah. It's pretty great. And yeah. what was Don Knotts like? Just a sweet guy. Yeah? You know? Yeah. Funny uh, in real life? You know, he, no, he was kind of serious. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was more serious. Andy would be more funny than Don, but... Uh, and Don was the funny one on the show, you know. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. And he was the No, Don guy. was really, really nice. He had some sort of eye disorder, Don. Oh. One night, his girlfriend brought him to meet me at a restaurant over in on Barrington in uh, Brentwood there. And I'd been told that Don can't really see anymore. And uh, so <laughs> I don't know why you compensate for one thing with another, but... Uh, we were sitting in this dark booth in this Italian restaurant, so I would sit really, really close to him, like that close to his nose, and really shout at him. <laughs> it's like, you know, he's not deaf, he's blind, but still, it's like, so Don, remember that episode when you, you know, whatever. And so, <clears throat> one way or the other, she had asked me to, if I could drive him home afterward. Right? Oh, wow. So I'm driving Don Knotts home. <laughs> this is Barney Fife in my car. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so I'm driving him home, and we cross Santa Monica Boulevard, and he lived in this big condo building there. And uh, so I think he can't see anything. And uh, I said, Don, just let me know what the address is and all that stuff. He goes, yeah, you see that third building down on the left past the thing there? And I'm like, so he could see way better than I, I thought. And so I realized that all night long, he thinks I'm a lunatic because I'm right in his face, you know. And yeah. he tricked you into being his yeah. Uber driver, too. I, I, I know. <laughs> Billy Bob Thorne is here. Uh, Goliath premieres Friday on Amazon Prime Video. We'll be right back. You can always hook a new customer with a bad back. You know, George Zacks had the balls to give out free 30-day prescriptions to new patients. Zach's Pharma is settled. Yeah, not on my watch. Your clients have been reckless. They killed over 200,000 people for profit. That's a targeted business plan. Now, I may be new here, maybe I'm just getting up to speed, but I'm in the mood to stick my fist up your ass and pull out billions. You get it? <laughs> it's just like Matlock. <laughs> Very mad, like Billy Bob Thornton. That is uh, Goliath, the fourth and final season. You got some good people on the show with you oh, this yeah, season. Yeah. Not that you didn't in previous seasons, right. but Bruce Dern is on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, J.K. Simmons is yes. on the show now. Uh, do you and J.K. Um, spend time together, hang out? Uh, yeah, I mean, a little bit, as yeah. much as we could, because when we started 
filming, we got shut down after a couple of weeks. Oh, right, you know, yeah. It's been March. a long time, hasn't it, yeah. since between two seasons? It was yeah. crazy, yeah. And then we started back in late August. And, uh, you know, it's funny because we don't have that many scenes together because, you know, when you have the bad guy and the good guy, there's he's in his camp most of the time I'm in mine. Right, right. But when we did do scenes, they were pretty electric. And uh, I love J.K. He had done uh, a scene in a movie I did years ago called Astronaut Farmer, and J.K. was and just one scene in that, so that's the only thing we'd done before that. But uh, he's a great actor. And was Bruce Dern in that movie as well? He was. He was, actually. wow. It's like he an astronaut the, farmer reunion you've it, got going there. It really is, yeah. <laughs> and I've worked with Bruce several times, and uh, he's been really good to me over the years. Yeah. You directed uh, the first ep this first episode? I, I did, yes. And, yeah. uh, What's but, that like, um, being the, the director? Because you've not directed any episodes of this particular show before, no, right? No, I never yeah. did. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't really sure I wanted to do it, but they said, well, the first one's the artsy episode that's more character-based. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. And uh, it ended up uh, you know, being a really nice experience. And uh, But uh, I love this season. It's uh, my favorite one. And you hope that the last one will be your favorite one. You, know? you hope so, for sure. Yeah. You know, I know you mentioned before you banned the Boxmasters. I know you guys recorded some stuff over uh, COVID. You did a Christmas album that's coming out yeah. in, in November. And I wonder, because it seems like you do know kind of everybody. Do you know Ringo Starr? Because he's going to be here this week. We've never had him on the show oh. before. Oh, that's very cool. I, I know Paul McCartney. Oh, yes, I've heard of him. But, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. Played bass in the band. Oh, yeah, the bass guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And, uh, <laughs> Lefty, him, right? I know. The <laughs> only, my only contact with Ringo is uh, we were recording a song over at A&M Studios over at Henson here down the road, and... Uh, there was a song, an early Beatles song, and I believe it was And I Love Her. Huh. But there was like a, a little thing I read where Ringo, instead of using a tambourine or a snare drum or anything, he was doing the backbeat with a box of matches. And it sounded really cool. And we were doing a thing that was a little quieter. and uh, Like he was shaking it like a maraca well, no, or something? No, he was tapping it. Oh. And uh, so I really wanted to know how he got that sound. So I called Joe Walsh, who's his brother-in-law now. Oh yeah, right. And yeah. Uh, and I said, Joe, do you, can you ask Ringo about the matches? <laughs> and so Joe didn't call me back for like three days. We were in the studio. I'm like, <laughs> you know. And uh, he finally got back to me, and he said, uh, Ringo says they're called. And then I interrupted him. I said, Why didn't Ringo call me? <laughs> no, I know, not really. But no, I said, <clears throat> but um, he said, uh, uh, they're this special kind of matches. There were long matches, and they were in England in the old days. So in other words, they didn't have them around anymore. So I just got the usual matches we get at the, you know, store here. And it didn't sound anything like that. Well, you got the wrong matches. I, I got the wrong matches. So it, <laughs> didn't, it didn't work out. But you didn't get. You weren't able to recreate it. No, I wasn't. No. But uh, but I do have a connection to Ringo now. He told me, "Good luck, buddy." <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it worked out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton, everybody. The final season of Goliath Friday on Amazon Prime Video. We'll be back with Fred Savage. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hit subscribe and all your dreams will come true, assuming your dreams are to watch more YouTube videos.